Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. Sean from Tested. Now over the past few months, we've been so excited to share with you the projects of Jackie Wan. Excellent designer, intricate stuff. Beautiful stuff. Yes. And today we're gonna to talk about how he turns those 3D prints into the beautiful finished products. Yes, one of the things that I always shy away from, so I'm hoping to get some tips. Wanna learn some stuff. So yeah. let's check in with Jackie. And here we are once again, back with Jackie Wan, uh, 3D printing expert, you model and design your own things. Uh, we've talked in previous videos with you about, for example, your lightsaber project, mm -hmm. modeling and putting out this Ducati, and some finished products like your Mech Warrior online figurines, your action figures. Today, we wanna to talk a little bit more about your finishing process sure. and how you paint, and how you take something from the printer and make it look like a real toy mm -hmm. or figure. Uh, so what do you do? So uh, part of my process is I airbrush a lot of my work. Um, I sometimes use paintbrushes and, and stuff like that. But one of the other things too is because you have a because I have a three D printer, I can also design my own tools uh, that I can use to you know help me do all this stuff. So um, this here is a three D printed airbrush station. Uh, I actually haven't found one that you could buy that has all the stuff I needed. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll just make one. And yes. I had all these like um, CD spindles left over. Yes. I'm sure everybody has those around their house somewhere and they're like not used anymore. So I thought, you know, th that would be an okay enough container. So I designed and printed this uh, this top section that goes on that basically holds all of my tools, my, my airbrush. Uh, it keeps the, the cup vertical so that the paint doesn't spill everywhere. And it has all the water tools. So if you need like, you know, drips of water and then, you know, a paintbrush to mix your paints. And um, you know this to add a lot more water, and then you know Q-tips are always useful. And you can wash your brush in this reservoir where there's like waste water already anyway. And then basically you can purge your airbrush um, inside here, so all the mess is contained within one area. Um, oh, that so is so brilliant. Yeah. So so the great thing about having a 3D printer is you can optimize, you can design your own tools, uh, so that you can do whatever you want more efficiently. Wow. And then if someone doesn't have, for example, a CD case and yeah. they want to get this, can this be adapted to use in different yeah, types of containers? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, this is this is connected just by these green parts. So all the green parts are separate pieces and this is all modular. So if you have a different airbrush, you could just make a different uh, holder for your particular mm -hmm. airbrush brand. And then, you know, if you use a different cup or, you know, whatever container, you could just print a different adapter uh, that'll connect to your cup differently. Wow, it's a little airbrushing station. I imagine that yeah. could also apply to other tools aside from airbrushes. You could use it for all sorts of tools where yeah. you could use a little reservoir. Yeah, you you could you could literally make anything that you need. So nice. and this is just one example of you know what you could do. And, and the cool thing is you can do weird things. I had this idea of. Um, my airbrush purging would clean my brush at the same time, so that's why this brush is angled the way it is. So oh. when you purge your airbrush, it'll actually spray the paint <laughs> off the paintbrush as well. And you can do weird stuff like that. And, and this was kind of a trial for me. Like I, I needed an airbrush station, so I made one quickly, and then, and then you sort of think about it a little bit more, and like how can this be more efficient? And then you can evolve your tools that way, you know, very organically and, and very functionally as well. You know, people online have been like, how do you get this airbrush station? I want one for myself. And you know you, you can just customize your own things, and you can make it on a three D printer. Now, in past videos, when we look at your project, you talk about how a lot of that finishing actually happens before the print in your design. Yeah. How you split up the pieces, how you adapt and model skins on top of the cores. For example, the Ducati bike, the red pieces are all they're separate from yeah. the black pieces. Um, but you can also create things after the fact, other three D printed pieces to assist, right? Yeah. So so that's what this is here. Um, so this is a this is a Canada ball. It's like a Poland ball, um, but it's for Canada. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Poland ball. It's a, ball? So it's, so Poland ball is a meme, uh, um, okay. and, and each country has a ball, uh, and, and some are different shapes. So Canada uh, but, ball. But this right is there. this is Canada ball, and, and because Ultimate Crew is coming to Canada, and uh, you know we're gonna have a shop. Mm -hmm. So so I made a Canada ball, and you know I thought. If I had to make a lot of these for promo purposes, you know, painting these things would take forever. Yeah. So I thought, you know, what better way to, uh, you know, do this is to create a mask in which I could reuse. Basically, masking. Uh, okay, so this is red and this is white. So you want to mask off all the white parts so that you can just airbrush the red parts really quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally, you would have to cut out, like you would do masking tape, and, and then, then you would have to cut it out with an exacto knife, yes. and uh, that would take a very long time, if you, even if you had to make like ten of these. So. You know, and because it's a 3D shape, you can't just you know use traditional methods. So I thought maybe I can 3D print a mask. Oh. So that's what I made this one for. 
So, so this is a, a 3D printed airbrush mask. Basically, um, you take a white one and then you place it in here. And then this other part goes on and then you just line up the maple leaf. And then you put these pins in and these pins go all the way through so it, it tightens the whole seam. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect mask. Yeah, and for, so the, and, and there's a handle that I made as well, so I don't have to get my hands all dirty. Uh, but if you spray paint all these exposed areas red, uh, you'll end up with one of these guys. So this is this is much faster. I mean, that took me like like five seconds to do, as compared to if I had to do masking tape, cut it out, spray paint it, and then take it off. You know, that would take a lot longer. So this this helps you do uh, like sort of low uh, yield, you know, production. Yeah, and it's one of the advantages of working with a computer model, yep. where you can take exactly, you know where that leaf is gonna be relative to the sphere, and yep. you can just invert it, create another model that surrounds it, and then the tolerances are good enough? Yeah, this is, um, you know, the tolerance is pretty good. I mean, you can see here, like this is, I, I use this to paint this one, so you can tell it works. The only thing I did extra was I, I painted the black around the eyes, uh, but you know, that's a small price to pay for not having to mask anything mm. with tape. And all the shapes are there, like you said. You just do, you know, this is a positive impression of a leaf. Uh, you just do a negative and then you subtract it from this shape. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when it's drying, you, I made a stand, you just like leave it like that. And, you know, it, it just makes the process more efficient. Just like this airbrush station makes, you know, painting more efficient. Uh, you can do other things too with 3D printers that, you know, allow you to be much more efficient in whatever you do. And you're also thinking then of your prints less as a prototype, and that is the final production piece. Yeah. And it's good enough for that, as long as you're thinking ahead of time, you know where to get rid of your seams, you're printing in the right way. Yeah. Um, and then, like, something like this, this is really cool you brought. This is a completely finished piece, yeah. beautifully painted. So so this is a, this is a barrel. Uh, it's for, so, so St. Bernard dogs are known for having, like, a barrel under yeah. their, uh, under their neck. So, so I have a beagle, and I made one for her. So the beagle's much smaller than a St. Bernard, so those regular barrels, you can actually buy them, like in yeah. the wood. But I was like, that's not gonna fit on my beagle, and like, she would probably hate it. So so I made a little one, smaller than this one, for, for my beagle. And then other people came to me, and they're like, oh I want goodness. one for my thing, so can you put like, you know, my flag on it and the name? So I started making some of these, and uh, you know, part of the process is, you know, I use this airbrush station like all the time for all this stuff, so, you know, that, that makes making these more efficient. And um, that's and, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and if you looked at it from afar, I couldn't tell if that was a 3D printed piece or if it was a cast piece, you know, molded and cast. Now, when you make something for production, are you, do you want to retain as much of the 3D printed? Or do you want to let people know, hey, this was 3D printed? Or do you want to kind of hide that completely? Um, I don't try to hide it in like, I won't sand everything so that it's super smooth and it looks like it's injection molded because that would A, take too long and B, like it's, it's not really, like if someone buys something 3D printed, they know it's 3D printed and, and that's part of the appeal. Mm -hmm. So like some of the mechs, the lines actually kind of help because it makes it look like metal, it looks makes it look raw. Um, for, for the Ducati bike, uh, you know, these smooth parts should be smooth, so that part I would obviously sand. Um, but for the rest of it, you know, I leave it un, unsanded. Uh, I'll paint it, you know, because they need to be a proper color and shade. But otherwise, I leave all the 3D printed, like, nuances. Like, if you can see the top of the barrel, uh, you know, those are all grains there. It kind of looks like wood grain, so I don't mind it that much. Yeah, no, that's great. I like faux wood, and yeah. that looks like faux wood. It's a yeah. really beautiful design. Do you ever apply extra epoxy on top or resin on top to, to smooth out some of those lines? I usually don't because most of what I design is, is very hard edge, mm -hmm. and doing the epoxy coating uh, tends to round corners and they pool in the crevices. Mm. So because my stuff have, have like the Max Ducati, and even these to a, a degree, has a lot of 90 degree surfaces, um, it's it's not great for for pooling epoxy. Uh, it'll smooth it out, but I think if you print in a good enough resolution and you print in the right direction, uh, I mean, you'll get results like this, and you know this is, this is no sanding at all. It's just primer and paint. Uh, I think it's totally fine. 
Awesome, awesome. You've printed a lot of things, you've designed a lot of things, and it seems like every project you do kind of takes on a different challenge, whether it's adapting a model for printing, designing something complete from scratch yourself, or doing something mechanical. What's next? What, what are the challenges you want to take on in 3D printing? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to anything. Like you said, I, I try a lot of different things, and I, I, I set my own goals for each particular project. So somebody may, came, may come to me and be like, hey, can you design me this thing? If it's an interesting project, you know, I'll take it on, but I'll put my own sort of restrictions on it. For, for instance, this one, I, I want it to be like, um, you know, it, it to come together, it, it look exactly like it was intended to be. So I wouldn't take any shortcuts in terms of like, you know, all the crevices are there because in the initial design, it's there in the bike. Right. Uh, so, and then these ones, I wanted to do joints. So it, it really depends on the project. Like I, I'm sort of open to whatever and I'll throw my own challenges on there just to learn more and to develop my own skills. Right, really pushing rapid fabrication on the consumer level to yeah. its limits. I love that. So thank you so much, Jackie, for coming all these weeks and showing us all your projects. Yeah. So many of these files are available online for people to download if they have their own 3D printers yeah. and they can follow you on your website and for future projects. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time with more 3D printed projects on test.com. Until then, see you next time.